evening. We'll be starting our yoga practice in about another minute or so. So just make sure that you have whatever prop you might need handy. You may need a block or maybe even a strap, or if you have a belt or a strap that you can use. Uh, if you don't, you can always use a tie. So you can always um, have a tie when you're practicing for some of the binds. So today we're going to just begin by coming into a seated position. So you want to come to the middle of your mat, and if you feel that you need to sit on your block to open up your hips, you can do that. And just let the knees gently fall open. And just place the backs of your hands onto your knees and draw your shoulders down away from the ears. And then closing your eyes, just feel that your arms are heavy and the shoulders are relaxed with your chin level with the mat. Feel the crown of your head extending up towards the sky. And just feel that your shoulders are really heavy, feeling the length through your neck, drawing your navel into the back of the spine, making sure that you keep that spine straight. And as you close your eyes, just begin to let everything go. So feeling a sense of openness and relaxation just before you begin, and maybe even allow yourself to set an intention for your practice. Maybe it would be something that you're going to allow yourself to always remain focused, or maybe you want to dedicate it to something or someone. So maybe just allowing whatever comes to mind to be brought inward and let that resonate with you. Just staying still for a few moments with that awareness of your intention or dedication. And just feeling the shoulders relax, using your breath to slowly come in and out through the back of your throat. Eyes are closed and the mouth remains closed. Feel the backs of your hands as they just relax heavy into your knees or just below the knees or above your knees to your side. And if you're not hearing your breath, start to make a little bit more deeper sound so that you can hear your breath. You don't want it to be too audible. You want to just hear that it's like a little bit of a whisper sound or a ha sound as it flows through the in back of your throat as you inhale and exhale. And once you've established this focus and awareness, let's bring our hands together in prayer, bringing your thumbs right to the center of your heart. We'll just start today's practice with one ohm, so you can join in if you'd like, or just listen to the sound, taking a nice deep breath in. And then slowly let your eyes open. And as your eyes open, just notice your sense of presence on your mat. Inhale, lift your arms up as high as they can go. Hands come to prayer. Exhaling, draw the hands to the center of your heart. Allowing the arms to float up again, lift, inhale, and hands lower as you exhale it down. Stretching up again, inhale, and bring the hands to the center of your heart with your exhale. And at last time, we're going to float the arms up, and then we're going to open the arms out to the side, and then just let them float down and just bring the tips of your fingers to the earth. Again, feeling the shoulders pulling down away from the ears, so soften the arms Soften the shoulders and close your eyes. Just visualize your connection to the earth, feeling grounded through the tips of your fingers, in through your sit bones, and allow yourself to feel a sense of groundedness through your practice. And being present with that groundedness. And then allow the eyes to open and turn your palms up. Raise your arms all the way up. We're going to fold forward. So you want to hinge forward only to where you can go from that, the hip movement here. You don't want to round the back and drop your chin. So allow the chest to expand forward and just keep your shoulders pulled back away from the ears. Tuck your tail under so that you really feel your tailbone pushing down to the mat. 
and breathe here. Nice deep inhale and exhale. And let's slowly walk the hands back up. Inhale, lift the arms all the way up, taking a twist to the right as you exhale. And place your right hand close to your lower back and make your left hand come onto your knee to rotate your chest open. Just finding that gentle twist. No need to go too deep. Just finding where you're comfortable to get a little bit of that squeeze into your internal organs. Inhale, raise the arms up and turning and taking your twist to the other side, allowing the right hand to find the knee and left hand behind. Lengthening your spine, draw the shoulders down. Make sure your chest is opening and you're not forcing your chin to rotate towards the shoulder. Allow both arms to lift again. Inhale and exhale. Open the arms out. Again, grounding through the tips of the fingers. Close your eyes once again. And just notice your sense of being grounded and connected. And then allow your eyes to open. However you can get there, we're going to come on to the top of our mat, at the top of the mat, starting in our mountain pose. Just going to take a few, a few series of sun salutations just to warm up the body. So we're going to do it nice and slow. We don't want to create too much energy at the very beginning. So allow your big toes to touch. Let your hips feel as if they're opening outward. Draw your tailbone down away from the waist as you draw your navel into the spine. And take your hands and just slightly turn them open and draw your shoulders back. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Keep your ears directly over your shoulders and chin parallel to the mat. Inhale, take the hands all the way up. Looking up, palms come together, slight back bend. Exhale, swan dive down. So come down first, forward bend. Lengthen your spine. Inhale, sliding the hands up the shins. Exhale and fold. Take your left leg all the way back. And we're just going to do a little variation in this sun salutation. So let's take the left knee down. Let the toes go flat. Sweep your arms back. Lift your chest. Raise your arms up. Inhale here. And exhale, bring both hands down on either side of your right foot. Take your right leg back to a plank position as your knees come down. Chest and chin come to the mat. Tailbone tilts up. As you come down, scoop forward, belly flat, shoulders pull back. Exhale, press it up through your down dog. So as you're in your down dog, maybe find some movement if you need to. But eventually, moving around, you want to then find stillness. So you may find that you have to move around to find that best, their best position. Once you're in your down dog, make sure your head is hanging. Make sure your heels are pushing to the earth. Nice deep breath. We're going to take our right leg and raise it all the way up to the ceiling. We're going to reverse that lunge. So we're going to take the lunge now onto the right side. Let the left knee come down to the mat. Sweep your arms back. Lift your chest. Inhale. And exhale. Both hands come down. And let's bring the left foot to meet the right. Coming back to a forward fold. Lengthen. Inhale. And fold as you exhale. Bring the arms out to the side, come all the way up, lift the arms up, palms together, look up, slight arch back, and bring the hands to the center of your heart. So let's just hold here, and just finding that breath, continuing to keep the flow of a breath moving through the back of your throat, maybe even increasing the length of your breath. Hear the sound it makes. So we're holding another two breaths here before we go Take another round of our sun salutation. So we'll just reverse the, uh, the crescent pose. So allow the chin to come level with the mat. Raise your arms up. Inhale, palms come together. Look up. Slide arch back. Swan dive down. Exhale. Slide your hands up the shins. Lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands to the floor. This time, right leg goes back. I'm going to lower the right knee down to the mat. And sweep the arms back, crescent pose, lift the arms, inhale, exhale, and bring both hands down, coming into your plank. So you're curling the right toes, the left leg goes back, knees to the mat, tilt your tail, chest and chin down, hug those elbows in, then slide forward so your belly comes onto the mat, shoulders roll back, exhale it up for your down dog, pressing the mat away. So now, second down dog, you might not have to really move around. You might feel that you can just be steady and still holding here. 
Nice deep inhale and exhale. Make sure the crown of the head is pressing to the floor. Heels are pushing to the earth. Feel grounded while you're in this pose. And we're going to switch sides. So this time the right leg is going to, I'm sorry, the left leg is going to lift. And we're going to lunge that left foot in between the hands. Let the right knee come. Sweep your arms back. Lift the chest. Inhale. And both hands come down on either side of your foot. Curl your back toes. Take the right foot forward. Lengthen on your inhale and fold as you exhale down. Arms out to the side. Hinge from your hips. Come up. Palms together. Look up. Slight arch back. As you return to your mountain, thumbs come into the chest. Hold here. And so noticing the second time around, maybe even a little bit more flow of energy, a little bit more increase in the heart rate. And so maybe you're a little bit more aware of that energy on your second sun salutation. And so allowing your eyes to open if they're closed. We're going to take a four fold, so raise both arms all the way up. Inhale, fold as you exhale, and plant your hands onto the mat. Bend the legs with the knees. Press your chest onto your thighs. Pull your shoulders back. We're going to take the arms and stretch them all the way back. Interlace your fingers. Try to lift those knuckles all the way up to the ceiling. And then keeping the back nice and long, start to raise your hips up to the ceiling. Feel your chest pressing onto your thighs. So if you straighten your legs and your chest moves from your thighs, that's fine. But try to straighten the legs so that you get a stretch through the hamstring and lengthen up those knuckles. Nice deep breath here. You want to feel the back of your legs getting that stretch. And keep reaching the knuckles. Try to feel as if they're going over your head. Bending the legs once again. And then peel your chest off your thighs. Start to straighten your body. Come all the way up. Lift the arms up and bring your hands back into prayer. Just taking a notice how you're feeling, what's going on, what sensations you're feeling within your body. No judging. Let yourself be present. And we're going to take another forward bend. So lift the arms all the way up. This time you're going to exhale, swan dive down, and reach for your big toes in yogi toe lock. So bend your knees if you need to. You're going to take the first two fingers, wrap them around your big toes. Let the thumbs tuck under the toes. Then pull your hips all the way up to the ceiling. Get a stretch through the lower back. Try to straighten your legs as best you can. Pull the shoulders away from the ears. As you exhale, pull your chest closer to your thighs. Draw the crown of your head towards your toes. So you want to feel the rotation of your hips lifting up so that you get a deeper stretch in through the back of the legs. Of course, if you have very tight hamstrings, you may have to keep a slight bend in the knee. But feel that you're trying to tilt your tail up to get that stretch into the back of the legs. Pull away from your thighs. Inhale. And then pull in closer to your thighs as you exhale. Inhale, drop the head and keep feeling those hips lifting up. Remember to be mindful of what you're feeling in your body. You don't want to force the stretches. Lengthening, inhale, release the toes. Arms come out in T, hinge from your hips. And let's come all the way up, bringing the palms together. Look up at your hands and follow the hands as they come to the center of your heart. Throw your chin to the chest. And listen to your breath. Hear the breath. Make sure that you can actually hear the sound the breath is making through the back of your throat. Hear that sound, that little bit of a whisper or a ha sound. So from here, we're going to take a forward fold and end up back in our down dog. So lift the arms up, inhale, swan dive it down as you exhale. Step one leg back, doesn't matter which one. Coming into your down dog, push the mat away with the heels of your hands. Lift your tailbone up towards where the wall and the ceiling meet. Drop the crown of your head towards the floor. Pull your navel into the back of the spine. Let's take the right leg, raise it all the way up. From here, just round your back and bring your knee in towards your nose. So bring that knee in. Keep yourself in the down dog position. Raise the right leg up again. And round, bring the knee in towards your nose. And raise that leg up. And last time, pull it in. 
and this time the leg is going to go up and you're going to flex your foot bend the right leg at the knee and let your right heel come towards your left buttock turn both shoulders so that they're facing to the floor just open up that right hip keeping the foot flexed allow that right heel to push towards the left corner of the room square the hip down towards the mat and release the right foot back down Staying in your down dog, legs are about hip distance apart, keep pressing through your heel. Let that left leg raise up, keeping your down dog position, round the back to draw the knee into your nose. Your head doesn't move, just your leg is doing the movement. Lift that leg and pull it in and lift and pull it in, lifting it up. And then flex your left foot, bend the leg at the knee, turn that hip, but make sure the shoulder stays square to the mat. Feel as if you're going to try to touch your right buttock with your left heel. And then as that left hip is opening, stretch that left foot back, keep the flex in the foot. Then turn that left hip to the floor and lower that left leg down onto the mat. Back into your down dog. Nice deep breath here. Inhale and exhale. And let's lower to the knee. Let's take a rest here in child's pose. Just three breaths. Taking a moment to notice where you are. Go back to how your intention or your, your dedication. Just feel that breath as it travels in and out. Nice slow movement of breath. And keeping the arms extended, look forward and spread your fingers wide. Come back on to all fours and bring your knees under your hips. We'll curl your toes and let's take it back up into our down dog. Right leg is going to come all the way up. We're going to take that right foot to the outside of the right hand. So it's going to be a wide lunge. You want to get it right next to that right pinky finger. So wiggle it in. Use your hand however you need to get that foot over to the edge of your mat with the right knee over the ankle. Then send your left leg back. As you send that left leg back, lower the knee. Both hands are right in alignment with your right foot. Hug your elbows in towards the sides of your body and press down. As you bring your chest down, you're going to feel a stretch coming into the right inner thigh and opening into that left hip flexor. So if you can, come to the forearms and want to come down. Keep your back from rounding. You don't want your back to round. And you want to keep drawing your right knee in towards your right shoulder. And just feel that stretch. So it can be pretty intense. If it's too much, come back up onto your palms. So don't feel that you have to come to your forearms. Remember to just be mindful of your own flexibility for today. And then slowly come back up. If you were on your forearms, come back onto your palms. Take your right hand and bring it to the edge of your mat on the right side and wiggle that right foot right in between the hands. Curl your back toes, push back through the heel, coming up into a high lunge. So you want to squeeze your inner thighs together, bring both arms back, peel your chest off your thighs. As you come up, stack your shoulders over your hips, raise your arms all the way up for your high lunge. Right knee stays bent, left heel pushes back and lift and lengthen through the tips of the fingers. Nice deep breath here. Now let's flatten that left foot, coming right into a warrior two. Open the arms out in T, right thigh remains parallel to the mat. And breathe. So you want to ground through the edge of your left foot. Try to turn your left toes a little bit more towards the left corner of your mat, the forward corner rather than the back corner, and allow the hips to face towards the long edge of your mat on the left side. Right from here, we're going to take the arms and just take them behind us. So our hips are still facing that longer edge of the mat. Let the knuckles, in, let the fingers interlace and let the knuckles push down. Keep your tailbone tucked under, stretch the arms back. So we're going to fold towards that long edge of the mat. Keep that right knee pushing out, continuing to open into the right hip, right inner thigh, and lengthen 
those arms all the way up. Just fold to where you can go comfortably. Try to keep your back long, keep your belly drawn in. So feel the space opening into the right leg and in the left leg. Slowly come back up, keep that right leg bent. Back to your warrior two, open the arms. Gaze down the fingers of your right hand. And then from here, windmill the hands down on either side of your right foot. Rotate back onto the ball of your left foot. And let's take the right leg back into a three-legged dog. Raise that leg up, flex the foot, draw the heel towards that left buttock and push the left heel to the mat. Try to keep opening up that right hip. Send that leg straight up and lower the foot down alongside your left. Let's take the left leg, lift it up, taking the left lunge to the outside of your left hand, to the pinky side of your hand. So bring it in, wiggle it in so the knee is aligned with the ankle. Send your right leg back as far as it can go with the knee pressing down. Both arms are straight and palms are underneath your shoulders. And then bending both elbows, just bring your chest down. So feel that stretch and that hip flex on the right side and that left hip on the left inner thigh also. And if you're comfortable on this side for your forearms to come down onto, you can do that. Just listen to your body. So sometimes one side has more flexibility. So if this tight side's a little tight, come up. If you're comfortable going down a little deeper on this side, go deeper. And just keep drawing that left knee towards your left shoulder. And slowly come up. So if you're on your forearms, come back onto your palms. You're going to take your left hand to the pinky side of your left foot. Wiggle that left foot in a little closer to the midline. Then you're going to curl your back toes to take it into our high lunge. So when we come back up into the lunge, the right toes curl. The right heel pushes back. So you want to feel grounded and strong in that left leg. And let's take the arms all the way back and lift the arms up. So left thigh stays parallel to the floor. Right hip is pressing forward, left hip is pulling back. But both hips are facing towards the front. So you don't want to turn to the corners of the room. Just lift up. And just squeeze those inner thighs together. So you want to feel a sense of scissoring your inner thighs together. We're going to flatten the right foot down. And you're going to come into your warrior two. So the right toes angle slightly more to the top of your mat rather than to the back. Left thigh stays parallel to the mat. Shoulders are down. And gaze down the fingers of your left hand. And keep the shoulders soft. Make sure both fingers extend from fingertip to fingertip. So try to avoid having that right arm drop down. And then from here, I'm going to bring the hands behind us. So keep pulling your left knee more towards the left pinky toe, just so that your chest is facing towards the right side, the long side of your mat. Stretch your knuckles back as far as you can. Tuck your tail under. Inhale, just lift the chest. Exhale, fold. And come towards the long edge of the mat. So we're not going to the front edge of the mat. You want to stay in the lunge. And just go as deep as you can to get that stretch in through the left hip and the left inner thigh. Keep the knuckles stretching. Depending on your flexibility, maybe you can come down even further. But try to keep your navel pulled into the back of the spine. Try not to round back. And you don't have to drop your head. We're not letting the head just hang. The head stays in alignment with the tailbone. Keep those knuckles stretched up. And then we're going to come all the way back up. So keep your belly in, back into our warrior two position. Open the arms back out again. Now we're going to windmill those arms all the way down on either side of your left foot. The left leg's going to go back to your three-legged dog as you lift it up. And we're going to bend the leg at the knee and just open up the left hip. Try to really let that right heel push towards your right, uh, left heel press towards your right buttock. And then straighten the leg, lower that left leg down. And right from here, let's walk the hands to the feet. So you're going to come to a 
ragdoll pose. So bend your knees. You can just let your arms hang or you can hold to your elbows or your opposite elbows. Let your head hang. So shake your head yes, shake your head no. And just let your hips release up towards the ceiling. Bend the knees as much as you need to. Let the whole, let gravity pull your head down, stretching and opening through your back and your shoulder, your uh, spine. And then from here, we're going to roll up one vertebra at a time. So bend your knees as much as you need to. Tuck your tail under, pull your belly in, and keep your chin into the chest as we roll up. You want to make sure that you're stacking your vertebra one on top of the other, allowing the tailbone to press towards the mat. Keep your chin into the chest until you're standing up nice and tall. And then once you're there, let your eyes open. Raise both arms all the way up. Inhale, interlace your fingers, make steeple fingers, so the point of fingers stretch up, lifting up as high as you can, heel toe your feet in so that they come close together where you can feel comfortable, stretch up a little higher through the tips of the fingers on your inhale, take a stretch over to the right as you exhale, the left hip pushes out to the side, keep stretching through the fingers, breathe here, feel that openness coming into the left side, drawing the left hip away from the rib cage. Up to center on your inhale, all the way over. Take it to the left, pressing that right hip away from the rib cage, pressing the hip out to the side, stretching through the fingers. And keep your breath moving slowly in and out through the back of your throat. Coming back through center, inhale, exhale, let's release. Take the arms all the way down. Hold in mountain pose, bring your hands to prayer, and then slowly release your arms down. Turn your palms slightly forward. Open your legs as wide as you need to, but not wider than your hips. If you can, keep your big toes touching. Let the tailbone press to the earth. Fingers reach down. Close your eyes. And find yourself being present in your pose. And slowly let your eyes open. Turn your palms out to the side, raising the arms up. Inhale. Exhale, fold forward, and this time take the hands onto the mat, so bend your knees, coming back to your down dog. So entering from the back of the mat, let that tailbone press up. Drop your head, press through your heels. And let's come forward to a plank position. Hold the plank, pull your shoulders back away from the ears. Tuck your tail under and holding here, developing your upper body strength, also strengthening the abdominal. Keep that belly in, tailbone tucks under. Nice deep inhale and exhale. And let's take it to a second child's pose. Bring the knees down to the mat, big toes touch, and let your tailbone press down towards your heels. Rest your forehead. And breathe here. Keeping those arms extended, let's hold in another two more breaths. We're going to work a little bit more on our upper body strength. We're going to do a few transitions from down dog into plank. So let's come back up onto all fours. Keep your palms right where they are. Bring your knees back under your hips and curl your toes, lifting up into your down dog. Send that tailbone up. You're going to raise the right leg all the way up to the ceiling. You're going to come forward to a plank as your right knee touches your right elbow. And then you're going to bend it back and up. And we're going to come forward to plank. Let that right knee go forward. So stretch the crown of your head forward. Pull the knee into your chest and straighten that leg back again to three-legged dog. Cross the right knee towards your left elbow coming into your plank. Both arms are straight, get that twist here, and stretch it all the way back, and lower the right foot down. So we'll do the same thing on the left side, and then we're going to add on, only if you feel that you're comfortable to add on, otherwise you can stay in down dog. So we're going to start going to the left side next, left leg lifts, taking our plank with the left knee coming to the left, 
elbow. So make sure you're in your plank. You don't want your butt to be up. Then send that left leg back, dropping the crown of your head, and come forward to plank. Take that knee forward. Don't drop your chin to the chest. Just keep the crown of your head forward. Lift that knee and send that leg back and up. Crossing now, coming to plank, right knee, right, uh, left knee to right elbow. So keep those shoulders over your palm and then send it all the way back. And lower the left foot down alongside the right, holding here. And let that breath flow. So that can be challenging, those, that the little bit of a arm balance while you're in your plank. And you want to use your upper body strength. So we're going to take the right leg up, raise that leg all the way up, crossing that right knee to the left elbow. So we're going to take a broken triangle, send that right leg out to the side. So the right leg is moving toward the left. You're on the edge of your left foot. Bring your right hand in a little closer to your left hand. Flatten your left foot down and then take your left arm up. Only do this if you feel that you're strong enough to do it. Otherwise, you can just work on maybe holding your right knee towards that left elbow. Notice if you start to shake or maybe just take the foot out to the side. When you feel ready, you can go into the full pose. So we're going to come back. Left hand comes down, that right leg goes back to three-legged dog. Lift it up, drop your head. Release the right leg back down. Nice deep inhale and exhale. So finding a little bit of a rest here while you're in down dog before we take it over to the left side. Make sure that you're letting that breath smoothly flow in and out through the back of your throat. Now taking the left leg up. So maybe you're only going to take it to crossing the knee to the elbow. Maybe that's where you can just work on finding your strength. Otherwise, you can take the left side of the foot onto the floor, and you're going to wiggle the left hand in, flatten your right foot, taking your broken triangle here. Raise that right arm up, lift through the fingers, lift that, make sure that left arm is strong. If that's too much, keep your hand down. Or maybe just hold to try to find that strength. And then we're going to release. Take that left leg and send it out and up. And bring that left foot down to the mat. Nice deep inhale and exhale. Hear the sound of br your breath is making. And let's take a child's pose, a third child's pose here, resting. A well-deserved rest after trying to tackle that upper arm strength. Let the forehead lower to the mat and just breathe. You can take your arms alongside your legs if you want. Turn your palms up towards the ceiling. Just taking a few more breaths here. Rest in your child's pose. Take the time that you need to rest. And then if your arms are still forward, bring them alongside your legs and turn your palms up towards the ceiling. We're going to slowly roll ourselves up. So tuck your, pull your belly into the back of the spine. Roll up. As you come up, start to stack each vertebra one on top of the other. And then we're going to come forward, lengthening out over the thighs. So using your abdominals, roll back up. So tuck your tail under, stack each vertebra, keep your chin into the chest. Using the strength in your, up, in your abdominals here. So if you find it challenging, if your weight starts to go forward and your hips start to lift, work on starting to get a little bit more of ab exercises so that you can strengthen in your abdominal muscles. So you want to feel that you're in control. We'll do that one last time. Lengthen and fold over. And then round, pull the belly in, tuck your tail under, and stack your spine. And from here, extend your arms forward. And let's take our legs out to one side and come to sit down onto the buttocks.
So we're going to sit down onto the buttocks, working on a little bit of boat pose, which will increase the strength in your um, abdominal muscles. So we're going to try and see if we can hold ourselves up while we're in our boat pose. So you want to bring your feet flat on the floor. Pull them in as close as you can to your hips as long as your back remains straight. So you don't want to round through the back. So get your back nice and long. To start with, you can place your hands right behind your thighs. But if you've been practicing for a while, you might not need to hold on to the back of the legs, or you can just do it as a way to get yourself to work on balancing on your sits bones. So you can rock back slightly, but you want the back to get long. Bring your knees and thighs together, ankles touch, and then stretching your fingers towards your toes. So if you haven't been practicing much, you can hold on to the back of the legs, but try to really feel that you're using your abdominal muscles. Try to not really think about holding yourself up with your hands. So maybe just kind of put gentle pressure. And if you can, straighten the legs and lift the fingers towards your toes. Keep the belly in. Nice deep inhale and exhale. Two more breaths. Try to stay with it. Lengthen, belly draws in. Last inhale, cross your legs here as you exhale, hands come to the knees. Now let's turn the hands up to the ceiling. Let's go back to where we started with our focus on being present, back into our dedication, our intention. And just noticing that we feel a little bit more open, more heated, more energized. But feel and continually continue to feel that you are grounded. So let your eyes stay closed and just reach your fingers to this floor. So fingertips reach to the floor just as they did when we were grounding ourselves at the very beginning. Take time to let the energy flow out from the tips of your fingers so that you feel it releasing out from your body. Nice straight spine. Close your eyes. Just breath in, and as you exhale, really direct the energy out through the arms, through the fingertips as they reach down deep into the earth. And just breathe with it for a little while. Notice how you maybe feel grounded, more present, more aware, that maybe everything's settled. And then slowly let your eyes open. And from here, just extend your leg forward. So we're going to take a seated forward bend. So move the flesh from your buttocks. And you want to ground through your sits bones, flexing your feet. And sit up nice and tall. If you need to use the block to help you sit up straight, place the block underneath your butt. And allow the toes to face towards your face, pressing through the backs of the knees. Bring your hands in prayer position. And lift both arms all the way up. Inhale. As you hinge from your hips, you're rotating forward, but it's hinging, not rounding down. Then float the arms down so that they come somewhere towards your shin. Keep feeling your hips pulling back, drawing them away from the bottom of your ribcage. And as you slowly let your body fold forward, think of placing your belly to your thigh. The chest stays open. Just think of the lower part folding first. A lot of times we start to round the back and drop the chin. So thinking more of the chin coming towards and beyond your knees. The belly comes to the thighs first. And slowly come back up. And then we're going to just scoot ourselves forward, coming to lower down onto the back. So once you're down on your back, just hug your knees into your chest, taking a couple of gentle rocks from side to side. Just massage your lower back. Place both feet down onto the floor and let your hands just rest onto your belly for a moment. Close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, just feel yourself letting go. No work right now, just experiencing 
the flow of energy in your body, the quiet. And just let your arms open down alongside you. Open your eyes. Bring your knees into your chest. And we're going to cross the legs at the ankles. We're going to take your hands behind your thighs. We're going to let our body rock forward and back. So you want to get some momentum to come up and then rock it back. Getting momentum to come forward and back. Just getting that massage. Keep your belly pulled into the back of the spine. And try to keep your chin more into your chest. The next time you come up, come up into a cross-legged position and sit up nice and tall. And then once you're here, let's make sure the left leg is in front. And so once that left leg is in front, interlace your fingers and reach down to the pinky side of your left foot. So once you get that left foot, just raise the foot up towards the ceiling as much as you can but try to keep your back nice and straight. So you might need to round down to get it. If you can't get your back to straighten, then maybe just hold onto the heel and keep your back as long as possible, straight as possible. And just keep feeling that that left knee is pushing down while you're trying to raise your left foot up. So you're going to feel a stretch coming into your left hip. And then send the toes slightly forward. See if you can raise your foot up a little higher without rounding the back. So getting a little more of that stretch in through the left hip. It may be very subtle, very subtle movement, but just do the best you can so that you hit a little bit of different area on your hip. Take the foot forward, raise up, and pull in. Think about guiding the toe towards your nose or your forehead, lifting more up towards your face rather than towards the ceiling. And we notice where you feel that stretch into that left hip. And then taking that left side of your foot, try to bring it right into the crease of your right elbow and wrap your right arm around your shin and take your left arm around the thigh and the shin and then rock side to side, just loosening up that left hip. Then place your left foot on top of your right thigh, just above your knee here. And sit up tall and notice your hips. You're going to notice your hips right away. Just rest your hand, one hand onto your right foot, the other hand onto your left knee. And just notice. You feel that you're really opening the hips outward. Close your eyes and breathe with it. It can be pretty intense when we open our hips. We hold a lot of tension there, so try to just breathe through it, breaking up any of that tension. Then let your eyes open, release that left foot down in front of you, and we're going to switch sides. So you're going to take the right foot now and bring it in front, interlacing the fingers and reaching down to the pinky side of your right foot. Once you have that, if you can't get your back to straighten, once you have that, just hold on to the ankle. And try to get that right knee to go out to the side and try to raise your foot up. And pulling more up and pulling towards your body, towards your chest. Just feeling where that stretch is in that right hip. And then send the toes slightly forward, raise up a little higher and pull in. Just to where you feel that intense stretch but trying not to round the back so you're not worrying about where the toe is in relation to your face. You want the back to be nice and straight. If you're very flexible, maybe you can pull it in way close to your face and almost touch your chin or your nose. So let the toes go further out. Lift the foot up, pulling towards your nose and your forehead. And breathe. So maybe one hip feels a little tighter than the other. Generally, we have the tight, a tighter hip more in one side than the other. So the hips aren't always open. And then we're going to wrap the left arm around. So you're going to take the side of your right foot into the crease of your left elbow and wrap that left hand around the shin. Take your right arm and wrap it around your thigh and let the hand come next to that left hand. And rock. Just rocking here like you're rocking a baby. Just loosening up any tightness in your right hip. 
and then allowing the rocking to stop. We're going to take that foot and do the best you can to bring it just below, above your right knee on the side, left knee on the side. And then right hand to the knee, left hand to the foot, sit up tall, let yourself open into that space of your hip. So feeling more intensity on that right hip but you'll feel it in your left hip as well. If you're not really feeling it in your left hip, you can also wiggle your left foot a little further so that it comes underneath your right knee. That will increase the stretch there in that left hip as well. But sometimes we don't have to move the foot. We can really feel it right away. And then just release that right foot and then lean back onto your forearm. So once you come down onto your forearm, take your feet as wide as the width of your mat. Windshield wiper your legs over to the right. And come back up and windshield wiper over to the left. And come back up. And then just come onto the hands. Keep your back long, windshield wiper to the right. So that left hip buttock lifts up a little more. And come back and windshield wiper over to the left. And come back. We're going to end up at the back, on our backs again. So once you come down, draw your knees so that they come about tabletop position. Keep your ankles in alignment with your knees. Drop your head, the crown of the, crown of the head faces the back of your mat. And you're on your, the back of your head. And keeping your belly pulled into the back of the spine. So your knees are directly over your hips. If you're pulling them into the chest, you want to send those knees a little bit further forward so that they come right in a tabletop position, knees directly over your hips and ankles in alignment with the knees. Now bring both arms out to the side in T position. Keep your belly drawn in and just rotate over to the right. Keep those knees from coming in towards your right, in towards the chest. So just let your legs go all the way over. It's going to really give a deep stretch into the left side. Try to let your left leg just rest on top of the right, do the best you can. Or if you need to, you can bring the block underneath your right knee and maybe allowing that floor to feel like it's lifting up to give you, allow you to rest the right leg and relax. And then let your left shoulder just relax down. Look over towards the left finger and close your eyes. And so those knees are more away from your chest to get a deeper stretch. And slowly take your head back to center. Now be mindful that when you come back up, you want your knees to stack over your hips. So draw your navel into the spine. Make sure the legs are staying hip distance apart. Come back up so your knees are still over the hips. Flatten that lower back into the mat. So squeeze your belly into the back of the spine, inhaling. And then as you exhale, let those legs go over. So they're just coming. The knees are in line with the hips as they go all the way over to the left. And let that left leg rest to the floor or your block and just relax. Feel that deeper stretch coming into the right side of your body. And let that right shoulder relax. Turn your gaze. Look over the right finger. Close your eyes. And just breathe here. And let everything go. Slowly return your head center. Both legs are going to come up and you're going to keep them right directly over your hips as you come up. So use your core to come up. And then once you're there, bring your feet down to the floor. Take your arms in close to your body. And we're going to take just a little bit of raising up and down, coming into a back bend. So we're going to do basically like a bridge pose, but it's kind of like a floating bridge. As we lift, the hips and the arms are going to come up all the way over your head. So draw the navel into the back of the spine, inhaling, starting to lift the hips, raising your arms all the way up, reaching as far as you can, get those hips to go up as high as you can. And then as you exhale, slowly releasing the arms as your hips begin to lower. So you want to try and get your hips to touch when your arms come down. And then once again, inhale. Raise those hips, lift the arms, stretching back through the fingertips, go up as high as you can. And exhale, slowly bring it all the way back and down. And do this a couple more times. 
Maybe close your eyes, go back to your intention for your dedication, and be present as you move through this flowing back bend here. And the next time that your arms go all the way back, once they're all the way back, just keep them there and keep your hips lifted and just feel the stretch through the fingertips. Try not to move your chin so you don't want to move your head in this position. We don't, we don't want to injure our neck. And just lift up as high as you can. Take a nice deep breath. Inhale, lifting up as high as you can. With your exhale, everything slowly lowers back down to the mat. And then once you get there, Hug your knees for a final hug into your chest. Rock gently side to side. And prepare now for relaxation. Your final pose of your practice. Bring both feet down to the floor. Stretch one leg straight out. Just notice one leg straight, one leg bent. And then stretch the other leg out. Legs go out hip distance. Feet flop out to the side. Let your arms turn open towards the ceiling. Squeeze your shoulder blades to open through your chest. Feel the backs of your hands as they rest onto the earth. Feel a sense of letting go. Know that this is your time now to integrate the work that you've done. So you can let go of the flow of that Ujjayi breath and resume the natural flow of your own breath as it comes in and out. Know that once your practice is over, you've done the best that you can you could for tonight. Try not to judge. Especially if you found some of the postures challenging. Sometimes we have to skip some of the challenging ones. Or we can try them once and say, okay, I'm not ready for this. That's okay. I'll just stay in, in another position for now until I am stronger and more flexible. And that will happen with patience and with practice. So we can't have these expectations that are unattainable right away. But we should expect that we sh should go towards that deeper pose when our body feels ready to do so, not when our mind is telling us that we have to. So we have to identify with that difference. And let everything go now. Practice is done. Time to rest. And just as you're resting, saying over and over to yourself, I breathe in, I breathe out, I breathe in, I breathe out. And just say this until you feel that it no longer is necessary. You feel that you can let your mind just follow your breath. You don't have to hear the words. Take your time with every exhale to relax more and more.
continuous feel your body as it rests without moving. Just relax. And slowly, gently start to move your fingers and your toes. Awakening your body, gently coming back to your present form, physical form, back to this moment. And taking a nice deep inhale, stretch your arms all the way over your head as you reach back as far as you can, pointing your toes, exhaling out any thigh sounds or moans, gently hugging, drawing the knees into your chest. And take a few rocking motions from side to side, just massage your back, just awakening your body now. And slowly, as you roll all the way over to the right side of your mat, rest your head gently on your inner right arm. So you can extend the arm out and let your left hand come onto the floor in front of your chest and just lie here on your side. Be with your stillness. Be with your peace. Taking another moment to just rejoin your dedication or your intention. Keep your eyes closed and slowly press into your left hand as you guide your body to a seated position. Trying to keep your chin into the chest, letting the head raise up at the last moment, but keeping your eyes closed. And let's take the hands, the backs of the hands, onto the knees, as we did at the very beginning of our practice. Feel the shoulders pulling down away from the ears. Keep your eyes closed. And just feel yourself in this moment. Be with your breath. Be present here and now. And keeping your eyes closed, let's extend those arms out to the side once again and the fingertips ground to the earth. Feel your spine nice and long, shoulders are relaxed. And then let the hands just flip over, reaching the palms slowly up towards the ceiling. Go ever so slow, slow it down as slow as you possibly can go. Reaching your arms up as if they're gui being guided upward but it's through a heavy thickness or through a heavy fog as you raise up, but feel as if it's effortless to take those arms all the way up. Keep stretching, reaching, and then once your hands slowly come together, just bring your hands to touch, and then open your hands out to the side and slowly let the arms extend out lowering down, maybe even slower, as if they're being guided through a heavy mud or heaviness, through a thick fog or cloud, but not feeling any effort at all, that they're just floating, almost as if they're not even attached to your body. And then continue all the way down until you find the tips of the fingers connecting back to the earth. And relax your shoulders once again. Take a notice of how you're feeling. Keeping your eyes closed, bring your hands into Anjali Mudra prayer position, letting your thumbs gently press to the center of your heart. We'll close the practice with a long OM, so you can join in if you'd like. Take a nice deep breath in. Um. Slowly, gently lower your chin to your chest as you bow to the light and love that shines within you, knowing that that light and love shines brightly within each and every one of us. Namaste. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining me. I hope you had a great practice, and I hope to see you next time. Have a good night. <clears throat>